So this first one is derivative of an integral. So the derivative and the integral are going to undo each other. Um, all you have to do is plug x in for t. There's not even a chain rule because it's just x. So it would just be sine of x to the fourth. Um, and so that one is a. Yeah, so the someone just wrote privately about the exam last year. So the exams this year are going to be full length. You will have multiple choice and free response. Um, so it's going to be the whole everything. So you will have the whole test. Yeah, um, here, can I talk? Can we talk about that once I'm not recording anymore? Let me finish going over this and then we'll have that conversation. We have the time today, so it'll, we'll be able to talk about that. Right here, we're given the graph of f, um, and it says let g be defined by this integral. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the derivative of that. Derivative of an integral is going to cancel, and that will just give me f of x. You're just going to plug x in. So that means this is the graph of g prime. This is the derivative graph, which is typically what you're given. Are you guys getting used to that? Like they typically give you the derivative, like they give you a rate function or a rate graph. That's typically what you're given. All right, I'll give you the following examples. G increases and climb goes up. Oh, oh, this is the stick it note thing. This is great. Okay, if you have this, then you're gonna be golden for this, right? We want decreasing, so that's this right here. And we want concave up, that's this right here. So the graph of G is going to be decreasing and concave up, where the derivative is negative, that means below sea level, and increasing. So where this graph is negative is this portion, and where it's both negative and increasing is from 1 to 2. So that one is D. I love that. That's like no work. If you have this written down somewhere, then you're just good to go. Right here, we're given um, an accumulation function, and we want the derivative. So instead of writing d dx out front, they wrote it out like find h prime. Now, this one's going to involve a chain rule because you have an x cubed there. So I'm going to do the derivative of that. It'll be 3x squared. And then you just take x cubed and plug it in for t. And so whenever they simplified that. So whenever you do a power to a power, you multiply. So it's going to be 2 plus x to the 6 underneath of there. So d is the answer for that one. All right, and then here we've got graph of f. Um, it says, what is the value of integral from negative 1 to 3 f of x dx? All right, this is cool. They asked for integral for f of x. This is the graph of f. Uh, we just need to find the areas, all right? So this, First area is a trapezoid. So, and it's actually right side up. It's a right side up trapezoid. So one half, the height is two. And then we're going to add the bases together. So two plus one. Now I'm also going to make that negative because it is below sea level. So that is a negative area, like a negative accumulation. All right, then I've got a triangle, one half base times height. The base and the height are both two. And then we just have to simplify this down. So here, um, the one half and the two cancel, which is nice. This uh, two plus one is three, except it's negative. So negative three plus, um, and then this would all be two. So negative one for that one, so A. All right, so here, which of the following is an antiderivative of this? That means which one of these, and I'll zoom way in here, if you did the derivative, you would get this as the answer. Like this is the answer. It's like, which one is the question? Um, and it is gonna be D. If you do the derivative of this, you're just gonna plug X in for T and that's gonna give you cosine X squared minus five, which is this answer here. So that one is D. Again, it's an antiderivative. So if you do the derivative of this, you will get what's given in the book. Right here, this one has a lot of moving parts to it. Also, we're going to need a calculator because there are all these crazy decimals. So you will need a calculator for this one. All right, values of the twice differentiable. When they say twice differentiable. What they're just saying is this function doesn't have any issues. There's no breaks, holes, gaps. There's no asymptotes, no sharp edges, no vertical tangent lines. Nothing weird happens. Right? And what is 
the value of, and I'm going to write this a little bit bigger so we can see it, integral 0 to 3 g prime of x cosine squared of 2g of x plus 1 dx. I would argue this is the hardest question out of this group of problems that you guys did here. I think this is probably the toughest one if you had to, to say which is the hardest. All right, this is going to involve a u substitution. We're going to let u equal this inside part. It's cosine squared of all this. So I'm going to let u equal the, um, the guts of the problem. And then we're going to do the derivative of that. So derivative of g would be g prime. So it's 2g prime of x dx. The plus 1 is a constant, so that is gone. And I'm going to need to adjust with a 1 half. When I go to highlight, um, I am substituting in for the g prime of x dx. So all of that is getting highlighted. In its place, I'm putting 1 half du. And whatever we didn't highlight is still there, which is cosine squared of all this stuff, uh, which we let equal u. So this is cosine squared of u. And then we have to adjust the boundaries. Here's where this gets weird and we have to use this table that they gave us. Again, you're just gonna plug in zero and three. This one is just a little bit weird. When you plug in zero right here, you're gonna have to do G of zero, which you'll get from the table, multiply that by two and then add one, right? So G of zero is five, multiply that by two, you get 10, add one, you get 11. So we plug in zero, we get 11. Now we're going to do three. All right, so it's g of three, which from the table, g of three is negative two. We're going to double that. That would be negative four, and then plus one is negative three. And then we're going to use our calculator for this. All right, so everybody type along with me. You're going to have one half. You could just type 0. 0.5. I did the fancy fraction, but you could just put one divided by two or 0. 0.5. Uh, math 9 to get the integral, it's 11 to negative 3. And then it says cosine of u du. I'm still going to type x. Uh, it's the same thing as when it's t, you type x. Um, but a little bit weird, you can't do cosine squared. You're going to have to type it like this. This is x actually weird with this problem. Because it cosine squared of u, it means cosine of u is being squared. So that's how you're going to have to type it. And also these parentheses that are given in the calculator that we have right here, that's like a whole paragraph, this whole thing. So you're still going to have to provide your own parentheses. There's going to be like three sets of parentheses in here. So not only was this problem weird, but typing it is also extra strange. All right, so I'm going to start my own parentheses, uh, cosine of x, and I have to close the parenthesis around the x and the parenthesis around the cosine and then square it, and then dx. So it is cosine of x squared dx, and then this will be our answer. And it's having to think about it a second. There we go. Negative 3.464. They always round up for the uh, multiple choice. So that one is b. I know there were three sets of parentheses on that. Here, you know what? Let me color code them. I'm big on the color coding. I think it helps a lot. All right. So the ones I'm doing blue. Well, let's see, the colors don't show up on the projector real well. Ones I'm doing blue, those are the ones that the calculator put there. But you can't use those. You have to use your own. All right. So then we have ones around the cosine. So those are pink. And then whenever you hit cosine, like when you hit cosine like so cosine like that, do you see how it starts a parenthesis? You have to close that as well around the U. So we end up with three sets of parentheses. That question was really weird. I didn't mind the U substitution. I felt like that, that part was okay. But then when you go to adjust the boundaries, you had to use this table. That was real weird. And then even typing it in the calculator was, was like a fight. You know, that was just a, you had to battle your whole way through that question. X on the calculator looks like, Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, we're going to be okay. All right, that problem was weird. Moving on, last one. All right, um, this is going to be another U substitution. We're going to let U equal this inside stuff. So the guts of the problem. So 6 U to the X plus 3. 
And so that derivative is 6e to the x dx. Remember, it's itself. And we're going to adjust with a 1 6. So we are going to substitute for e to the x dx. And in its place, we're putting 1 6 du. And so what's still there is sine of u. Um, no boundaries on this one, so I don't have anything to adjust. Instead, all of these say plus c. Now we need a function that if we did the derivative, we would get sine, like sine is the answer. When you look at the choices, you have cosine. You know it's going to be cosine, but it's like, ah, is it positive or is it negative? Um, it is going to be negative. So we get negative six, one six, cosine of u du. The reason for that is, if I took this away, the derivative of cosine would be negative sine, but there's not a negative there. So you need this here to, to cancel that out. And then you just have to put this u statement back in. So it's negative one six cosine of all that stuff plus c. And so that one is d. Or wait, no, it's not. There's a negative, it's c. Oh, see, I would not get a perfect on the AP exam either because I can do all the math perfectly and then still pick the wrong choice because they all look the same to me. Negative, I even had a conversation about the negative and then still almost filled in the wrong bubble. Oh, geez. Anyway, C for that one, negative one sixth cosine of all that. 